Today, I wanna to talk to you about a transfer switch. What it is, how it's wired, and how it works. So let's get into it. All right, so this is my system here in one of my warehouses. This is a backup system. The battery goes in here. I took the system that I had built and I'm replacing it with a new one. That's gonna be a future video. But for right now, I wanna to talk to you about this one. This is a transfer switch, right? And this is a thing that I've mentioned before in other videos, but I've never really explained in detail what it is, how it's wired, and why you should have them. But I have mentioned that every building should have one of these. I don't know why these are not standard, but it's a very good idea to have it. Every house and every commercial building should have one of these because it's, this is the thing that allows you to, when the power goes out, then this is the plug that you can supply power into the building so you can temporarily power it in an emergency, right? So that's what this is. This is, I guess it's a sub panel. This is the main panel here. And uh, yours might look a little bit different. This is a commercial three phase panel. That's why there's three lines in there, right? Three legs. Uh, and then the, and the, then the white one, which is the neutral, right? For all three of those legs. Um, so yours might be, if you're in residential, then you might have only two. And sometimes in commercial, you only have a split face. And that's only three wires, two faces, uh, or two hot wires, and then one neutral. So here's how it works. The, the ele electricity comes in through those thick wires, right? And then uh, the neutrals of all the circuits in your building or in your house gets connected to that bus bar there. All the other ones, they go into these uh, three lines and every third um, circuit breaker is connected to the same, right? So the first circuit breaker is connected to that one. The second is connected to the second one. The third one is connected to the third. And then the fourth one, then it goes back to, to the first one, right? And they just go like that. They, and so what happens is that the other leg comes from your circuits through that conduit there and then it goes right into the uh circuit breaker right so if you're running just a regular circuit with lights or whatever then you might want to run like a 10 amp breaker or a 15 amp breaker or a 20 amp breaker right? i think that this is not 15 and 20 that's what they are i think i only have all 20s those are the smallest ones and then they go 30s and then 40s uh, and you can get up to 50s, right? Um, is this a 50? No, that's a 20. So according to whatever load is on the circuit, then that would determine the size of the wire and then the size of the circuit breaker, right? So you want to be above, a little bit above of what your thing is going to be, but just not too big, right? That the cable will melt in case of a short, right? So those circuits will come in there and then go to that circuit breaker. And that circuit breaker connects it to one of those three legs. So the sub panel, this uh, transfer switch, what it does is that it goes in there. And instead of having that circuit come in and connect to the thing, now that it's kind of hijacking it. It takes that circuit and then it connects it with these little wire nuts, right? And so now that cable that comes from your receptacles or your lights or your circuits, instead of going straight into the here, they go into those cables and then it goes through that thing and then it goes into one of these. So this one only has uh, six um, circuits and you have to choose the six circuits this panel has more than six, right? It's got a bunch of them there, about 20. Then you have to choose the six circuits that you want to be able to power in an emergency situation, right? Through this uh, system here, through this transfer switch. And then those six circuits, basically you hijack them. It goes in here and then it goes through this switch. This is a two-way switch. You could only be connected either through here or to that, right? And so this is a, uh, when it's online, it's just bypassing it. That, that, that electricity uh, comes here and then it goes through here and then it goes right back into that circuit and then it goes out right out. But whenever you put it on generator, right? So this is off, it's not connected to anything, that circuit right there, one of the six circuits off, or you put in generator, all of a sudden that connects it to one of the legs in here. And three of these circuits are connected to one of the legs and then 
three of the circuits are connected to another one of the legs. This is kind of made, it's made for a split face um, setup, right? But you can use it on a th on a three phase setup, just like this. So all you have to do is just ignore the other phase, right? And connect, make sure that the loads that you're putting in here, you know, go into the same one, right? So basically all the six circuits have to be on two of the three legs that are in here, right? And then when you put it on generator, then you have to feed it. And this is just a, you know, just a, a, a socket uh, that is kind of backwards. That's why, you know, that's would be like at the end of an extension cord, but it's mounted in here. So then this extension cord is kind of backwards. It's got this thing. You plug this in here and then the other, what comes out of here has to go into either a generator, right? Just a regular, um, typical, traditional gas generator. It could be a big one or it could be a small one. It has to be enough to support, you know, the loads in here that you're putting in here. Uh, and by the way, these are rated at 15 amps and then these are rated at 20 amps, right? So, um, yeah, you have to make sure that your circuits are accordingly, right? Their, their size according to this thing in here. Um, this are, I guess the generator would have to be split phase because there's two phases in here, but it, not necessarily. You could also tie in the two faces, the two hot wires, and then just the neutral. And in, like in this case, that's what I'm doing here. This is a inverter that will convert DC power and store it in the battery here, and then it converts it to AC. And then from here, it's going to go in here, right? But this is only one... Uh, one single face, right? And it's, it's and it's 110, and so it's half of a split face. So you would have to connect the two hot wires, and that's okay because you're only doing it here. Whenever uh, that happens, it's only it only works that way when it's in gen. When it's in line, then it goes back to the original setup here, to whichever leg it's attached in here, right? So that's what it does it kind of gets in between and your circuits instead of coming in here and connecting straight into your um breakers then they have to go to this before right they go in there and then from there they go here so that gives you the ability to disconnect and i'll give you an example where is the lights there we go this is the one circuit that connects the lights right and so right now, the lights are connected to one of these pins in here. So that's why they're off, because there's no power going in there. So if I wanted to power the lights, I would have to electrify two of these pins, right? And then it'll get the power from here, and it'll power the lights, right? But this is disconnected now from here. So let's turn it back on. There we go. So this is a very simple device. It's just a little sub-panel that goes in between your circuits and this panel right and it should be in every home but it is not so you have to pay an electrician to install this because whoever works on this has to be uh certified right by i don't know the authorities uh, the state or whatever um and so it wouldn't cost you too much i think an electrician would charge you this would take a uh, competent electrician probably two three hours maybe to install so it would cost you like two three hundred bucks probably i don't know what the rates are going but anything above that would probably be too much money i don't know maybe electricians make w way more money than that or not but it shouldn't be more than 500 bucks i think the actual uh hardware costs about 300 to 500 dollars there's different versions i have bigger ones the other uh, warehouse that i have here i ended up putting a bigger one with more circuits uh, some are even smaller. Sometimes they are even just have like one uh, switch and then one socket here. So they don't have a bunch of circuits, uh, but they all kind of work the same way. Right. And so this is what you would have to install in your home if you want to be able to power your house uh, off of a different uh, source. Right. Other than the grid. And this basically what it does, this is the safety part there is no way to connect this source of power that you connect here and to the grid, right? Uh, and your circuits are either one or the other. When they're up, they're connected to this source of, uh, of energy that you connect in here. And then when they're down, they're connected to the grid. But at no point can can both of them be connected together. That's what the this switch here 
uh, is capable of doing, right? So it's one or the other one, never the same. And that's a safety feature so that you don't backfeed into the grid uh, because then that's dangerous. A lot of people say because of the line, but the, in reality it's because it would kill most likely it would kill your equipment. If you have something connected in here and somehow it backfed into the grid, even if the grid is not electrified, if the grid is electrified, it's gonna fry your thing because there's gonna, they're gonna be out of sync. But if the grid is not electrified, then it's gonna overload your equipment, right? Your equipment, this is a 3000 watt inverter. Uh, what's on the other side of those three uh, faces, it's more buildings with more loads and it would add more than 3000. And so the, that load would just overload this and then kill it. And also would um, exceed the maximum uh, well, that, that any of these little circuit uh, breakers would handle. And so there we go. That's what would happen. But it's impossible to do it. That's why these exist. And that's why you have to install this. And this is the correct way to install an alternate source, an emergency source into your building or your home. Uh, and so, yeah, if you're going to get into this, I would suggest you buy one of these and you hire an electrician and you have it come in there and install it for you. And then now you can power your home off of a generator or a set of batteries uh, and, uh, you know, and, and an inverter, basically. Right. So. So there you go. That's just a quick rundown video. Hopefully it wasn't I didn't make it much more. <laughs> hard to understand than it actually is <laughs> uh yeah if you have any questions uh comments put them in the description thank you for watching this video we'll see you guys on the next one bye oh by the way before i go uh these the next uh battery uh project that i'm doing is using these little 20 cell batteries and this mega dongle thing which is just a big power distribution you know thing so you'll be able to connect all of those batteries in there but here's the cool thing that i'm finding out that is a lot easier to handle these batteries if you tape them together like this in force and that way you go in there and then you Put the next block in here and the next block in there and the mics and so they'll uh they have a flat spot in the bottom so you put that on the bottom and then they don't uh they won't slide and then you'll be able to connect them this goes in here i'm gonna put all that in there uh so stay tuned for that video if you're interested in how to install the easy battery systems for backup and then of course i'll show you all the other stuff uh the charger the inverter and then, you know, the, the thing that we just talked about today. All right. Stay tuned for that project in the next couple of days. Thank you for watching. Bye.